Welcome to the Chemo Monster. In the last video, we have learned about the design basics of a distillation column. But for starting the design, first you have to understand the temperatures that are donated in a distillation column. Like one, we have a feed temperature. The feed temperature is associated with the actual temperature of the feed. Like you have if you are using a cryogenic column then for example your feed is like in my column demethanizer I have minus 22 degrees centigrade feed temperature but in the column the temperature will be different it will be based upon how much product you have in vapors and how much you have in liquid because the composition defines the temperature for example to clear this concept like in the condenser what you will have achieved you will have the temperature at which the condensation or phase change will be taking place or in the reboiler at the bottom you will have the temperature at which the boiling will take place so the both will be the saturation temperature of your feed streams or the streams to be condensed or the streams in the reboiler so if we for example if we have a cooling water inside the condenser you can assume if we have 100 degrees centigrade which is the boiling point of water you will say that the water has the tendency to stay in vapor phase more than it has the tendency to stay in the liquid phase so to understand this concept or to make a calculation better for a multi component mixture like if you have a binary mixture you can have for example two components I have water and acetone so acetone will be moving upward it is li uh, lighter or heavier maybe or water will be moving downward if it is heavy but in the multi component mixture you can have a one fixed temperature based on a component like if you say uh, we have a mixture of ethane, butane, propane, methane, water and you can say oh it will have a boiling point near the 100 degrees centigrade no you can say anything about it directly but you can say the component which will be higher in amount or whose composition will be higher that will have more contribution to the saturation point or boiling point here and here the both are saturation temperatures in the different way here the liquid is vaporizing here the vapor is condensing into the liquid both phenomena are happening happening at saturation temperatures but in opposite ways so at the for the multi component mixture we were talking about the you can calculate the top and bottom temperatures of saturation based on the composition of mixture so a value is specially defined in the thermodynamics context like you have a deep register chart like for example and it actually depends on temperature and pressure both you can say if water is vaporizing at 100 degrees centigrade at 1 bar pressure so if you have a pressure higher than 1 bar for example I go to 2 or 3 bar the boiling point of the water will be higher because it's such vapor pressure become lower so this is the function of both temperature and pressure your k value the k value actually is equal to y over x y over x most of the times uh, we have confusion while we study about the distillation column that y is actually donated or assigned to a distillation product or condensate overhead and x is denoted or assigned for the bottom or downstream product but it is actually not the case because you know from the very strong literature reference the Y actually denotes the vapor fraction or vapor phase composition or X denotes the liquid phase composition like you can have at a same plate you can have both the liquid and vapors existing so you can say for example methane and water are present and 50 50 percentages of methane is in vapor and in liquid so you can say it has x component is equal to 0 0.5 on that plate 
and y component is equal to 0 0.5 on the same plate so you have to make remember the difference the x and y are not donated or assigned to a specific top or specific bottom it it is based on the liquid and vapor phase compositions at each plate or in the reboiler or condenser so k is equal to y over x the larger the k value it shows the you you can say it is in numerator y is in numerator k is equal to y over x so larger the y the larger the y you can say the larger is the tendency of the component to stay in the vapor phase like for example i will take an example like we have 100 psi pressure and uh, for example we have minus 30 degree f so you will uh, draw a line from that minus for example <laughs> i have done it to minus 40 so this is showing that you your column is operating or your condenser or reboiler is operating at 100 psi and minus 40 degree f you have to fix a temperature and pressure at which the k values are fixed like here at a pressure and temperature the k values are fixed but you if you have do not fix one variable like i have fixed pressure 100 psi and i can vary the temperature at different zones like minus 10 minus 20 and you can see the variation in the k values according to the changes you made across this scale like here you can see for the methane you can see it the value of k is 1.7 for ethylene it is 0 0.25 for propane it is 0.16 so you can see the different values of k and you can simply imagine or understand the reason of methane having high k value because methane is very light gas and it has very high amount of tendency to stay in the vapor phase so this is actually the introduction to the k values and k values are very important in determining the equilibrium composition at each stage because you know if the equilibrium is achieved then it means you can have a special amount of one component or special fraction or fix or specific fraction of one component at each plate like you can say in a multi-component mixture i can say methane ethane propane butane pentane in a mixture you can say at one plate at one plate having these amount of k values for all components you can only achieve 30 percent methane or you can say 10 percent ethane or 5 percent propane based on the relative volatility difference the higher relative volatility or higher k value component will be more in the vapor phase at each plate so it makes difference remember the relative volatility term is different which is represented in the context or literature as alpha alpha is equal to k of each component divided by k of reference component for example if i am uh, I, I want to talk about or I want to nominate the relative volatility of methane. I will say the k value of methane at temperature and pressure that was fixed divided by the k value of reference component at temperature and pressure fixed. So the reference component k it will be decided based on the light and heavy key concept. It is about the deciding the temperatures of the top and bottom. Also, the temperature along the column will differ. For example, if your feed is entering at the middle, I have told in the last video the feed can enter at different plates based, based on the feed composition and the distillate or bottom composition you want to achieve because at each plate there will be different equilibrium that is maintained and after achieving equilibrium at every plate in different amounts or increments you can achieve your final distillate composition or at your bottom product composition so there will be two sections one will be called the m section which is below the feed plate m section the n section is donated above the feed plate like he, for example we take this feed plate here will be m plates and this will be n plates so both have different pinch points like most of the people ask whether to use underwood reflux method 
for the calculation of minimum reflux ratio or whether to use Colburn. The Colburn is more accurate because it actually tell us the pinch points at the top plates TM and TN. So you can't say your, if your feed temperature is minus 22, your column temperature will be also minus 22 because it will differ based on the compositions and the temperature that each component carry during the phase change like one component will coexist in most places in both phases like liquid and gas and for the above plate you can also have component that are only available in vapor phase or in the bottom the most heaviest components will likely to uh, be available in only the liquid phase so this is the major concept and let's talk about the light and heavy key for the material balance first you have to decide that what component in what percentage will be present in the distillate like I can say here A, B, C, D are in feed but the top product have A, B, C and the bottom product have B, C, D so what will be our light key the light key will be the component which is the lightest being lightest is present at the bottom the lightest component present at the bottom is B B is the lightest component present at the bottom so it is light key and what is the heaviest component present in the top product or distillate that will be the heavy key like we have C C is the heaviest pro uh, component in the top product in the upper end or distillate so C will be the heavy key light key heavy key if you have confusion so rewind this video again and clear your concept about the light and heavy key because it is important in the binary mixture you have fixed target like again saying you have acetone water mixture so you can say I, I have to separate acetone above or below based on the volatility and water or acetone uh, if we, if we have, I want to say if you have multi component mixture like acetone, water, methane, ethane, then you can't separate based on all components. Or you can say, I will have this in this amount, I will have this in this amount. No, you have to target one component because the equilibrium will be maintained based on that key. So we have to consider two keys at the two ends light key on the upper end, that is a reference or that is ambassador of the upper end the heavy key will be um, ambassador of the lower end so you have two targets specified for the separation of a multi component mixture the next for the material and energy balance like I have selected for example my methane is my lighter key so I have its larger fraction in the distillate and I have its K values at my column top pressure and te temperature and then I have to calculate the value of X for the distillate like I have condensed the product into the liquid form and I have to calculate the X so I can tell on the base of its volatility K value X is equal to Y over K so I can say the sum of all the components X will be equal to or should be equal to 1 same for the bottom but for the bottom the reboiler is actually converting the liquid entering in the reboiler into the vapor phase so you have to calculate the Y the vapor phase that has been created in the reboiler Y is equal to KX so the sum of Y the mole fractions of all sum must be equal to the one so it is shown here and you can check if you are going right uh, it is also based on the top pressure and temperature the K values are based on the temperature and pressure as shown in the deep restore chart you can also see it in the book introduction to thermodynamics 7th or 8th edition maybe chapter number 10 about the refrigeration